morning guys and welcome back to another episode of Orchid Hunters Australia. Uh, we're in the Danning Nong Ranges today, the southern end of it. It's autumn, we're starting to get a few different bits and pieces coming out. Uh, but more than anything today I wanted to come out here to show you guys uh, one of the points on the Orchid Hunters Code and that is treading lightly. And basically I want to demonstrate the point that um, an orchid enthusiast could be compared to a politician. They can either be part of the problem or the solution. So hoping to inspire you to be able to control your orchid anxiety when something catches your eye and understand that there are other things in the vicinity. It's likely more than not that there are going to be other things in the vicinity. Uh, so we're just going to have a quick look at that today and demonstrate that point. I've mentioned before how easy it is to find an abundance of various ground flora along a track. This is the best scenario, easy access, easy finds and minimal hazards. Inevitably you will find yourself going off track. In some places you are not allowed to. In some places you will even find fences to manage visitor impact and illegal poaching. This is unfortunate as orchid enthusiasts with authority are forced to lock out other enthusiasts. This is part of the reason behind the Orchid Hunters Code, to bring all demographics together. I've just come across my first orchid. Uh, it's the first thing to catch my eye. Uh, and I just want to demonstrate how uh, the showy part of the orchid, uh, in this case, it's not in flower, but perhaps a dense colony of leaves. Uh, the first thing to catch your eye, it's not necessarily all there is. And you might have to overcome that initial bit of orchid anxiety when you want to settle in and take your photos and just have a look around the area and just really understand what you're about to step on, if that's the case. This large tongue orchid, seen in the summer special previously, now has lost its flowers and is coming into fruit. This small colony of approximately eight plants is easy to see, but let's look closer. After placing pink marker tape at every orchid in the vicinity, you can instantly see how if you go straight for the first thing you see, there will be collateral. This orchid in particular, having its leaves present all year, means that these small individual leaves are new plants recently germinated and very important to the survival of this colony. Here you can see that the area of occupancy is over a couple of square metres, dense in the centre and scattered on the outside. These scattered plants are at high risk of trampling. It's understandable that orchid enthusiasts can be interpreted as perhaps the uh, primary threat to orchids. When you go out there, everybody's looking for the same thing. Everybody could be huddling around the same orchid at different times, sometimes at the same time. Uh, and ultimately what we want to stop is that negative impact on the orchids. Take pink tape with you to help you develop the habit of looking around and provide a visual guide as you patiently take photos. You will also develop an understanding of supporting factors of orchids and how populations are reacting. This will enhance your ability to find other orchids. So I was starting to feel a little bit left out. All of my mates had seen a Parsons Bands orchid, which is, is not too rare. Uh, it's pretty common, especially in autumn. Uh, but I hadn't seen one and I've seen one now. And it's a great example of uh, looking before you go to take your photos because it's got a tiny little leaf, uh, four to five millimetres long. Try not to come into contact with any ground within 30 centimetres of terrestrial orchids. The weight of your body can easily compact soil and damage roots or rhizomes, damaging the plant directly or making it hard for the population to expand and grow. Here I've identified the 30 centimetre barrier which is good because this species in particular has a tiny leaf whilst emerging and in flower. Whilst taking photos I find emerging orchids that could have been crushed otherwise. Areochylus cuculatus is one of 12 in its genus, endemic to Australia. Areochylus, meaning woolly tip in reference to the labellum, and cuculatus refers to the dorsal sepal being in a hooded formation. It is said to have a honey fragrance and have a wide distribution from Tasmania to Queensland and across to South Australia. So just heading out and find one more orchid. Uh, it's a small tongue orchid. Uh, similar to the large tongue orchid that we've seen previously. Uh, however, this one uh, theoretically is upside down. The labellum is pointing up this time. It's still got that dark red coloration with some black pattern on it. Uh, it's uh, obviously smaller. Uh, it's quite nice in its own right. Found from Tasmania up the east coast to Queensland, this species prefers sclerophyll forest but is found in montane forests, growing typically higher than most other species in its genus. 
There are 20 cryptostylus species with five in Australia, and studies have shown that all five are pollinated by the same wasp, yet hybrids have not been seen to occur even when the orchids are growing together. So there's something a little bit different for Orchid Hunters Australia. We're having a look at the Orchid Hunters code, uh, how to minimize negative impact on terrestrial orchids. So I hope I've enlightened you a little bit and I hope you're inspired to go and tread carefully and to keep an eye out for all the little bits and pieces that might be in your path as you're getting into it. Thanks for watching. Every mammal on this planet instinctively develops a natural equilibrium with the surrounding environment. But you humans do not. You move to an area and...